Welcome back. This is the continuation of the past two lectures, previous two lectures regarding Verilog HDL. In this lecture, we want to emphasize some aspect of structural modeling and data flow modeling for realizing combination logic. So, here we will talk about structural modeling in Verilog and the data flow modeling. So, in the structural modeling, design we can design at lower level of abstraction level, that means we can write in terms of gates. That means, at this level we can describe the circuit in terms of AND gate, NAND gate, NOR gate and so on. And Verilog has some inbuilt or predefined primitive which are the, that means there are some reserved keyword and we will come to the, that those primitive which can be, I mean, we can use that for our design purpose for the logic design. The primitive can be instantiated any like as module to design that means we can inside a module we can instantiate. So, this primitive is like a another built in module which are by default available. Then basic logic gate we can construct any logic circuit that means using this AND OR NAT NAND gate. In fact, these are the uh, lower level of gates which can be used to construct very complex logic circuit. In logic gates which are available in Verilog one is the AND gate and you can see first you have to remember this AND gate in the blue symbols, these are the reserved keyword, we should not use this as a variable. Then gate 1 is the instance name, that means this must be different for any other gate that you are using, all instance name must be different. Then we should in the port listing, we should maintain the sequence because these are the built in primitive. So, we should use out then i1 and i2 separately. That means, we should use this sequence for the built in primitive here. So, that means, one AND gate is available, NAND gate is available, OR gate is available, NOR gate is available, then XOR is available, XNOR is available, also NOT gate is also available, NOT gate we can like gate 7, where we can have output minus input or maybe I whatever. So, that means this also this is like a this kind of signal symbol. So, this is also available ok. So, NOT gate is also available. Now, suppose we want to take an example of a 4 bit ripple carry adder. So, 4 bit ripple, ripple carry adder we want to design using structural modeling. First in the 4 bit that means the data is 4 bit. So, this is a 4 bit data like A30 where our A3 is nothing but we are assigning like A3 and A0 we are assigning like A0, right. This is similarly B30 and this is a carry in and the sum is another 4 bit number and we are already familiar and these are the scalar, these are the scalar, this is also scalar, this is the scalar, okay. Next, in a ripple carry adder, you see we are using 4 full adder, number 1, number 2, number 3 and number 4 and the first carry is the input to the first adder and the carry out is the output of the fourth full adder is nothing but the carry out final. That means, if you take the IC, suppose this is our IC integrated circuit of a 4 bit adder, 4 bit or uh, ripple carry adder IC, where we are using a data A, which is a 4 bit data, vector data, another data B, which is another vector data and the carry in, these are the available input signal. Output is our sum, which is again 3 cos 0 and then we have C out. So, these are the input output pin. So, the first input is here carry in 
and carry out this will connect to the input and output. Similarly, this data also are coming from input side and this sum is going to the output side. But the internal variable like C1, C2 that means the carry out of the first carry adder, first full adder will, will, will act as a carry in for the next. Similarly, carry out of the second will act as a carry in for the next and so on. So, these are the internal variable which are where and these are scalar. Okay? And then each full adder output will act like a summer block and since these are the LSB of the A0 and B0, so it will be LSB of the sum and so on. Now, we want to make top down design approach. So, that means first if we want to design a 4 bit adder, we have to break into full adder, we need 4 such full adder and each full adder we need 2 half adder and 1 OR gate. So, that means ultimately we have to create module. So, we have to create modules for what? So, we have to create modules. So, number 1 module is the OR gate. In fact, OR gate we can simply call, we do not have to create a module. So, we have to create a module of what? Half adder. That means we have to create a module of half adder. We have to create a module of full adder and finally, we have to create a module of 4 bit that means the ripple carry adder. So, this is the main module, this is the main module and these are the sub module inside. So, once we identify, we have to make each module and test it whether they are working fine or not. Then we have to instantiate such half adder module inside a full adder module. Then we will instant instantiate full adder module inside a ripple carry adder module. How does it work? So, we will start the top level design which is a 4 bit adder. Now, so we will design a 4 bit adder. This is a module name where sum is the out that is a sum 4 bit sum carry out scalar. A is the vector input, B is the vector input and C is the scalar carry input and this is architecture. So, in this we have listed the ports. Now, you have to declare the input. So, input is a 4 bit 3 0 and A and B comma comma this A and B both are 4 bit input. Again we are not talking about any sign bit is all unsigned. Then another input is a scalar input we have to define separately and then output sum is a 4 bit sum and since we are not specifying any register these are all where that means instantaneous variable and output C out is the carry out which is a scalar. Then if you look at this diagram this C1, C2, C3 are the where the, these pins are not connected to input or output. So, these are the internal pin so you have to declare as a where. That means it will be like a wire connection. That means this output will be connected to the next input like that. How are we going to connect? We will call the first full adder, full adder 0, where the sum will be the output. Again, if you go to a full adder circuit, that means we are assuming there will be a full adder where the sequence will be sum, carry output, then A input, B input, carry input. So, this will be my full adder circuit. So, I want to go by sequence because I am not declaring port by name, I am declaring port by sequence. So, the first sequence it must maintain. So, this is like a module full adder, module like a full adder. So, where this sum sequence is maintained, carry out maintain A, B, C. That means, the first full adder carry out is wire connected to C1 which is an intermediate variable and that will be used as a input for the next full adder. That means, if you go to the next full adder, it output is a sum 1 which is here, it output is C2 which is here, it input is A1 data and B1 data which is true and it carry in is nothing but the output of this first full adder. So, that means, it is the connection where similarly you can think of third adder and the fourth adder and the fourth adder final uh, the carry out is the final carry output 
and S3 is the MSB of the sum. That means this will be LSB and this will be MSB. Similarly, this will be LSB for the data and this will be MSB for the data. So, for the first carry, first adder, full adder, it will take the carry in and last full adder will generate the carry out and internal carry in carry out will be the wire variable and end of the module. Now, we have instantiated full adder module four times. So, we need to give four different instances. Next, what does the full adder look, how does the full adder look like? So, this is a full adder circuit. Each full adder consisting of two half adder, right. And if you take the second half adder, the first half adder will take the data, it will generate some S1 and C1, its own carry, internal carry out. The second half adder will take this sum out. That means, if we they use a different color, this is like connected to this pin and carry in. So, that means you can say overall sum is nothing but A XOR B XOR then C in, right. Whereas, carry out it is a function of that means what is carry out? It is nothing but so there is a and get that means it is nothing but a and that means you can say and that means you know I mean it is nothing but the and combination of a b and what else a and b output ok. So, it will be the sorry that means c out will be a and B whatever will come with or C in. So, this is what is coming. Okay. Now, how does this full adder we have to define? So, full adder again sum will come first carry out A B data carry in. We have to define A B C all are scalar input S and C are scalar output and again internal variable which you have to define S1, C1 and C2. S2 is not needed because S2 is directly the sum output. So, you can say we are calling the first half adder. Half adder again will define there will be a module which will be half adder module, half adder where we are defining S, C, A, B. Then for this half adder input A, B are directly connected and C1 and S1 output and the second half adder the two data input will be S1 data that means, uh, that means if you take the sum for this S1 data. So, this is S1 data and it will also take carry in another data another to generate sum and the carry out will be you know or gate of C1 C C1 C2. C is the output that is the actual carry it is the OR of C1, C2. What is C2? It will be the OR with S1, so it will generate. That means, this is a half adder module and we can generate, now we have to write the half adder block. That means, if you go to half adder block, half adder block we have to define sum first, carry out second, then two input. Again, we have to define input output, and these are all XOR gate S is the output, AB is the input, and gate where SC is the output and AB is the input. And we know that these are the built in primitive, we have to define output first, then input. So, we can gen generate the stimulus for half adder, and we will be discussing in the case study. So, we can for four adder. Now, if you go to data flow, so this is a structural modeling, data flow modeling gives a higher level of abstraction. And the designer's uh, digital circuit, uh, I mean that HDL, any synthesis tool will understand if you as, uh, write some you know operator like you know we are doing like a summation and or different type of operator we have discussed. So, it can recognize that this is the function that you are going to implement. So, the model get converted to gate level design by automated tool because you are not giving a structural model 
and more effort can be given. So, that means in order to optimize you have to make sure that you properly identify those otherwise in structure level you are specifying that gates. So, that means it is very easy for the synthesis tool to optimize as if it is already optimized. But if you are going for more and more higher level then it will be very difficult for the tool to optimize because from the symbol you have to characterize the logic circuit and then it will optimize. So, in the data flow modeling we have discussed that assigned statement will come left side out and right side it is a continuous that means any change in a and b will immediately get reflected. So, here we are talking about a and b are the input and this output is the AND operation. And we have discussed in the previous lecture that if the, there are primitive gate module the right side that can be scalar or vector the right side left side be a scalar or vector, but left side cannot be a register. Okay. So, if there is any change in left side right side then the left side will change accordingly this is the instantaneous module. And this wire out suppose this is a wire out equal to a and b. So, and operation is a inst implicit continuous assignment. Okay. Then if we instead of this if we write assign then it is implicit that means it do not need to declare it as a wire because this assignment statement will consider like a wire it is a instantaneous. So, that means instead of writing this we can write a data flow modeling simply by assign statement. Okay. So, this data flow modeling can be used to design a T flip flop which is a combination of a D flip flop and an inverter which is shown here. And if you go further down the D flip flop can be even realized using logic gates. We are not going into detail, but it can be realized similarly you can write a D flip flop module by writing this whole logic. So, one can try it out, but you can go you have to define again input output port. Then the way internal variable should be represented by where. So, s bar s r r bar all are there and there is another c bar internal variable. So, all are where then you have to assign. So, c bar if you see it is simply complement of clear that means when you write assign suppose you are writing assign statement a equal to b complement. What does it mean? That means, it represents a inverter where b is the input and a is out. Okay. So, it is continuous, continuous statement. By this way you can actually realize all this circuit by this operator that we have discussed. That means, it is a b twice operator and this can actually implement the whole circuit simply by you know uh, using the data flow modeling and that makes life easy because if you write this assign statement Verilog synthesis tool will identify this as an inverter. Okay. So, example D flip, T flip flop if you write T flip flop now consisting of D flip flop then you can interconnect by an inverter again there is an assign statement and you can recall a D flip flop and this we are calling by name dot. Okay and this end of the module. So, you can implement a T flip flop by using a D flip flop and inverter again a D flip flop can be realized by logic gates. But when you go to BVL modeling it will be easier because we can just use a clock synchronized operation we do not know, need to go for you know this com complex logic and, uh, uh, diagram because if you write D flip flop command if you can synthesize then Verilog will automatically generate this circuit by means of synthesis. Okay. So, in summary we have discussed structural modeling in Verilog and we have also discussed data flow modeling in Verilog HDL. That is it for today. Thank you very much.